What's up guys, we're back this week for another episode of the A-Game. Join us as we recap this week in App State Sports and don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Snapchat at the A-Game Sports for weekly updates on Mountaineer sporting news and all the latest onset action. Stay tuned to see who Marnie Bond interviews this week on Mountaineer Spotlight and see what students around campus have to say in this week's Q&A game. I'm Gray Salter. And I'm Austin Lopp. And this is the, the A-Game. A -Game. A windy and spooky Halloween night included plenty of rain, flurries of snow, and a rare home setback for App State. The first place and 20th ranked Mountaineers became the last Sunbelt team to suffer a league loss in 2019, as Georgia Southern used two long touchdown runs early in the second half to gain separation before holding on for a 24-21 victory Thursday night at Kidburger Stadium. Akeem Davis Gaither led App State with 16 tackles and Zach Thomas completed 25 of his 51 pass attempts for 271 yards and three touchdowns. Malik Williams, Corey Sutton, and Thomas Hennigan all had between 67 and 89 receiving yards. Zach Thomas needed less than two minutes late in the second quarter to direct a 10-play, 92-yard touchdown drive, which ended on Williams' 15-yard touchdown pass, which is six seconds left in the half but Georgia Southern quickly turned a 10-7 lead into a 24-7 advantage thanks to Wesley Kennedy's 68-yard touchdown run and Shywert's 55-yard touchdown run in the first five minutes of the third quarter. The Mountaineers cut their deficit to 24-14 on Thomas' 10-yard touchdown pass to Sutton midway through the fourth quarter. After an unsuccessful onside kick, App State regained possession with 6.05 left thanks to DeMarco Jackson's third down stop and safety Josh Thomas' tackle for just a two-yard gain on Wirtz's fourth and three keeper, from the Mountaineers 38. Zach Thomas's 22-yard keeper and Marcus Williams Jr.'s 20-yard run to the Georgia Southern 9 set up Sutton's acrobatic touchdown catch with less than five minutes left to cut the Eagles' lead to 24-21. App State responded with another three and out, starting with Noel Cook's first down tackle and a second down stop from Davis Gaither and Trey Cobb. Davis Gaither battled down Wirt's third down pass, forcing another punting situation, and the Mountaineers took over at their own 28 with 345 left. A 10-yard completion to Williams and a 7-yard pass to Hennigan led App State to take another timeout with 32 seconds left. And there was still 20 seconds remaining after Hennigan and Williams ran out of bounds to cap gains of 8 and 16 yards. The halftime break halted any momentum and App State's late rally fell short. App State will face South Carolina for a night game in Columbia, South Carolina on November 9th. In Austin, you know, looking at that game on Thursday night, that Halloween mashup, it really was Quite a setting, and the weather was a huge part of that for the Mountaineers. Obviously, 24-21 loss at home, really tough for the black and gold, a game that I think a lot of people expected them to go in and be a revenge game because of what happened last season. Obviously, Georgia Southern being the team that knocked App State out of the top 25 last year. They do it again this year in 2019 on Thursday night, and that wind was whipping around like 15-mile-per-hour wind gusts. There was snow blowing around in the stands. You and I both were in the stands for that game, and it honestly was a, a bit of a miserable atmosphere. Absolutely. We, it really couldn't have gotten much worse weather-wise. I can't. I mean, it was terrible being there. I can't imagine having to play in that, situ that situation, much less having to pass the ball. Zach Thomas did it 51 times. He completed 25 of the passes and got 271 yards and three touchdowns, but where we faltered was the fact that our rushing team never really got it going. There were no rushing touchdowns for the first time this season. We only had 152 total rushing yards from the three backs and Georgia Southern possessed the ball for seven minutes longer than App State so our offense wasn't on the field as much and they really couldn't get anything going. And a lot of that time of possession was coming from what Georgia Southern was doing offensively. Not a surprise the Eagles come out and run the triple option something that they did last year against the Mountaineers that they've done against every team essentially um, for the past couple of seasons because that's kind of their their bread and butter that triple option and they had a huge day on the ground. They had 335 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns, and they only took four pass attempts in the game, only completed one of them. So the passing attack, not really a factor for Georgia Southern. And considering the conditions of this game, I think that definitely played into their favor. App State obviously trying to throw 51 passes in conditions like that, really difficult to move the football. On the flip side, Georgia Southern had their way against App State's defense. 
App State had a lot of trouble sealing the edge, a lot of missed tackles, forcing the second level to try to bring down guys who have that momentum going forward. It was a tough day for the App State defense. Absolutely. Conditions-wise, it was made for Georgia Southern to be, be successful. You know, they were going to run the ball, and we knew that, and our offense just not really able to get it going well. But So this, this week, we, so we were at 20. We've dropped now to 32 with only five top votes in the top 25. The rest of the season is pretty much like this. We have to win against USC next week. We have to win at Georgia State the week after that. Those are two tough games. Georgia State's six and two right now. Yep. They're looking good. So we have to win out, and we need Georgia Southern to lose another Sun Belt game so we can secure that second straight Sun Belt championship. Mm -hmm. So we're still sitting at first in the conference right now, but so we, we need things to work out, and we have to do the rest of the season the right way. Absolutely. And, you know, looking at the bowl projections now as well, New Orleans Bowl might be more of a likely thing to see in the App State future. With that one loss, maybe potential to leap the New Orleans Bowl, get into a better bowl, but at the moment, that seems to be where the bowl projections were. Last week, Cotton Bowl was in the discussion, but yeah, now with that loss, take the hit. You got to take it on the chin and move forward. So looking forward, a potential good bowl for the Mountaineers still to come in the future. After the break, we head to Marnie Bond for this week's Mountaineer Spotlight. Stay tuned. Honorary Forest Ranger Betty White here, lending a hand to my dear friend Smokey Bear. Because for 75 years, he's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But there's a lot more to say. Like, if you park your car on tall, dry grass, the hot exhaust pipe can start a wildfire. So keep the animals safe, especially the cute shirtless one. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. I know the Appalachian Invitationals this weekend starting off your season officially. How have you guys prepared in the preseason for this, for, or for what's ahead? Um, we've been preparing um, all preseason, all since, basically since Nationals last year for this because um, pretty, pretty big deal, ready, excited to start a new season. Um, just been working hard, getting our conditioning up, getting our technique down. Uh, we've been working hard. It's first tournament of the year, so we want to start out with a bang and have 10 champions and look good on the mat. I know you guys added 12 new um, teammates to your team this year. How have you guys helped them adjust and make them feel part of the team? Yeah, a lot of new freshmen this year, a lot of new faces, which is good because more people to like wrestle with and, that and stuff, but they're all really great. I think they're all going to do really good things. Um, yeah, all 12 people we've added have had great work ethics in the room and Everybody on our team wants to get better. We have a great team chemistry right now, and uh, you know they just keep working, keep learning from the upperclassmen. They're going to get better and do good. You guys have won the SoCon regular season championship four years in a row. How are you going to make it a fifth? Just keep working hard. You know, uh, we're motivated. Our goals never change. It's not just to win the SoCon. We want a top 15 finish. We want a top 10 finish. We want multiple All-Americans. Uh, but we want that ring, baby. Ready to do it again. Um, past four years I've been here, we've all won, and I just want to make it a five-peat. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. What have you learned from being a Mountaineer here? What have I learned? Uh, just so much. I have feel like I've really grown a lot through this program, learned a lot, a lot of hard work and good values, meeting good people. It's been great. I've learned a lot, you know, a lot of wrestling skills, a lot of life skills, how to be a better man. Uh, Coach Bentley teaches us a lot on and off the mat. You know, he helps us out in a lot of situations that most coaches would probably turn their backs on and let other people help. So very thankful for Coach Bentley and our coaches. I know school and traveling practice matches, it's a lot. How do you balance all of it? Um, time management, and we have a lot of study halls. We have a lot of mandatory study halls that we have to go to. A lot of our teammates you'll find in DD just – working on homework in between classes, in between practices, so just time management. I saw that you were qualified for the NCAA. What, how, how does it make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel good. Uh, my brother is actually a four-time qualifier, and I only have a chance to be a three-time, so I'm a little be behind the eight ball, so i got to pick it up a little bit. Is there a team this year you're looking forward to just squashing? <laughs> well, 
a bit the big rival this year is Campbell, so hopefully we squash them. <laughs> we'll have to make it out for that. Well, thank you for answering some questions. Back to you guys in the studio. Appalachian State Volleyball dropped a 3-1 to one road contest to South Alabama on Saturday. The Mountaineers hit a .345 in the opening frame and opened a 12-6 lead thanks to a 4-1 to one run. Following the final timeout of the set, the Black and Gold captured the final four points of the set, getting a kill from Will Form and Grace Morrison along the way to take a 1-0 lead. In set two, South Alabama took a 7-4 lead early in the match, then went on to tie at a set apiece for the 25-12 second set victory. In the third set, South Alabama scored the first five points to jump out to a 5-0 lead, with the Mountaineers eventually catching up, but ultimately failing in the set 25-20. In set four, App State went on an early 3-0 run to take an 8-7 lead. The score would be tied eight times before three straight Jaguar points gave them a 20-18 lead. Following a kill from Longley, South Alabama scored the final five points of the contest to clinch the stanza and the match by a 3-1 count. Emma Longley had 20 kills and a .304 in the contest and now has posted 20 or more kills in six matches this season. She also recorded the 1,245th kill of her career to move into eighth place in program history. With Victoria Wilform having 15 kills in the match, she has now reached double figures in kills 10 times this season while registering 15 or more kills in three straight matches. Sam Bickley dished out a match-high 46 assists, while Emma Riley tallied a match-high 16 digs. The Black and Gold will battle Georgia Southern in Statesboro on November 8th at 6.30 p.m., and then will travel to Atlanta to take on Georgia State on November 9th in Atlanta at 6.30 p.m. The Appalachian State men's soccer team fell to Georgia Southern 1-0 on Saturday evening in St Statesboro, Georgia. Appalachian falls to 10-5-1 for the season. Mountaineers and Eagles were in a defensive battle in the first half with a 0-0 tie going into the break. Jacob Madden stopped two of the three shots on goal in the opening period, including a late attempt by Georgia Southern to keep the game tied. App State attempted six of its nine shots in the second half, while two of the attempts were on goal, with one coming in each period. The game was scoreless until the 60th minute when Azad Liadi scored from the for the visitors. Nick Rogers looked to tie up the game with a strike in the 86th minute, but was stopped by Georgia Southern's goalkeeper. Appalachian returns to action next Saturday against Georgia State in the regular season finale at 7 p.m. for Senior Day at Ted Mackerel Stadium. Appalachian State field hockey allowed a goal with less than one minute remaining in regulation in a 1-0 defeat at Ball State on Friday afternoon. The Mountaineers outshot the Cardinals 5-2 in the first period. Senior Kaylee Selner finished Friday's game with two shots, both of which came in the first period. Sophomore Anna Smorelli blasted a shot off of a penalty corner in the 24th minute but Ball State's Whiteski over Dinsk made the save to keep the game scoreless. Appalachian earned its final penalty corner in the third period, where junior Megan Smart recorded another shot on goal for the Mountaineers. The Cardinals earned a penalty corner with 57 seconds remaining, scoring the game-winning goal with just 49 seconds left in regulation. Seven Mountaineers registered shots on Friday, including four players with two shots or more. Smart led App State with three shots, two of which were on goal. Junior Annette Jarros tallied her fifth defensive save of the season in the second quarter. Jarros increases her career total to 16 defensive saves, which ranks first in App State history. With Friday's result, App State, who ended the season with a 9-8 record, will enter the Mid-American Conference Tournament as the number six seed. The Mountaineers will play number seven seed Central Michigan in the opening round at noon on Wednesday. Three runners earned all Sun Belt honors as Appalachian State Women's Cross Country finished third at the Sun Belt Championship on Saturday morning. App State finished with 78 points overall. Arkansas State won the team title with 57 points, and South Alabama was second with 65. Sarah Venable recorded her first all-conference accolade of her career with a fifth-place finish for first-team honors in a PR time of 17 minutes and 42 seconds. Her mark ranks as the ninth-fastest 5K time run by a senior in program history. Izzy Evely earned second-team All-Sun Belt honors with a ninth-place finish in 17 minutes and 58 seconds. The all-conference honor marks the second straight for Evely. Kylie Frady earned her first all-conference honors with a 13th place finish in 18 minutes and 5 seconds for third team all Sun Belt accolades. For the second time in the past three seasons, Appalachian State men's cross country captured the Sun Belt team championship. App State saw five runners earn all Sun Belt honors with six finishing in the top 20. In all, the Mountaineers totaled 48 points. For his efforts, Curcio was named Sunbelt Men's Cross Country Coach of the Year for the second time since the Mountaineers joined the conference. 
In addition, Oliver Wilson Cook was tabbed as Sunbelt Freshman of the Year. Isaac Benz continued his strong season with a fourth place finish in 24 minutes and 21 seconds to earn first team all Sunbelt honors. Ryan Brown also earned first team all Sunbelt accolades finishing right behind Benz in fifth place with a time of 24 minutes and 29 seconds. Along with his Freshman of the Year award, Wilson Cook earned second team all Sunbelt honors in 10th place with a personal record of 24 minutes and 56 seconds. George Hotling and Gable Dersham were both named third team all Sunbelt. Hotling crossed 14th overall in 25 minutes and 8 seconds, and Dersham earned his third consecutive All Sun Belt honor with a time of 25 minutes and 9 seconds. The Mountaineers will send a group of runners to the Montreat Open on Friday before competing at the NCAA Southeast Regionals on November 15th. After the break, we head to campus for this week's Q&A game. Welcome to the A Game. I am your host, Shaheem Stafford, and I'm standing here with Laney. Now, Laney, of course, this past Thursday, App State played Georgia Southern. Of course, we took a tough loss, tough loss 24 to 21. What's your thoughts on the game? Um, I think we had our mindset past the game. Um, I think we underestimated Georgia Southern, even though they're one of our rivals, because we have been playing so well. Um, I think we thought the game was a shoe in. We had it in the bag. There was a couple of calls on the, uh, from the refs that I didn't really agree with. Um, it was really disappointing because obviously we had a perfect season. <laughs> End of the day we lost, but it's cool, you know. Well, it's really disappointing that we're no longer ranked because I just like to brag to my friends at other schools um, that think they're better than us. And Hopefully come back with a vengeance next game. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we'll come back in Columbia next week. That one hurt. I really thought we were. this was the revenge game, but I know we have it next week, so I'm okay. We're good. Um, it was a tough loss. Really hurt my soul, but uh, we're definitely going to bounce back this uh, upcoming game. I think there were some bad calls, to be honest. Yeah, bad call. calls. I think we should have won, but it's okay. It's okay. You know, there's always another week. You know, playing South Carolina this week, so hopefully it'll go better. I mean, I'm kind of relieved. I was going to dye my hair pink if we went 10-0, so I can't do that anymore. Um, thankfully. I think we really showed up in the fourth quarter. It was awesome. We, we showed that we uh, wanted to win, wanted to fight. We didn't just kind of lay down. It's been a really weird semester. We haven't had much rain all year, and it rained the entire game. So I think it took them a little while to get their footing with the rain. But then in the fourth quarter, when they came back and actually got it, it was a close run. My next question is, if you can choose one superpower, what would it be? I think I'd time travel. Yeah. Go back and win that game. Oh, one superpower, it would probably be... The ability to fly. Probably teleportation. Um, I would like to, I think I would like to be able to teleport. Invisibility. Ooh, flight. flight. Yeah. Probably teleport. I hate traffic. Superpower? Uh, I'd like to be able to fly. To have super hearing. Yes. Oh, actually, I changed it to read minds, I think. Uh, teleportation. Um, definitely to fly. Yeah, definitely. Probably the ability to read minds. Mind is teleportation. That's it. Back to you guys in the studio. And now it's time for a player of the week. This week we have two players of the week. Appalachian State junior guard Justin Forrest and senior forward Isaac Johnson, who were both named preseason all Sun Belt. Forrest was tabbed as the preseason second team all Sun Belt, and Johnson was named preseason third team all Sun Belt. Last season, Forrest posted career highs in scoring average, shooting percentage, rebounding, and assists. In 30 games, he reached double figures in 24 contests, including two games of 32 points. He also had four or more assists in eight games, including a career high six in two contests. 
He enters the 2019-20 season just 69 points shy of 1,000 for his career. Johnson established himself as one of the top rebounders in the Sun Belt last season, finishing second in the conference at a career-high clip of 8.6. He also averaged a career-best 10 points and shot a career-high 51.2% from the field. He reached double figures in scoring 16 times, rebounding 12 times, and had a team-high eight double-doubles. Definitely a bright future ahead for both of those guys this season, but that's all the time we have this week for Mountaineer Sports. Remember to tune in every Tuesday at 8 to catch up on the latest in App State sporting news. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Snapchat at The A Game Sports for daily updates on everything Mountaineers. We'll see you guys next week on The, the A Game. A -Game.